The Atelier series has been very successful, spanning all the way back to 1997, and while I have enjoyed my time with these games, it's still a series that I've worried a lot about because of how much games are being censored so companies can get lower age ratings on their titles, or ultimately not get cancelled over content-sensitive snowflakes would deem as offensive. But now a new interview with Ryza 3's producer has released, but he answered a question about the series potentially moving away from fan service that has caused a ton of controversy. I have a few different things to show off, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted, and of course if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon or a supporter via YouTube memberships. So, it all started with this tweet from Go Nintendo saying the Atelier Ryza 3 producer says they're making a conscious effort to move away from fan service. And while this thread did blow up, the original interview also did as well. So as you can see, the original Nintendo Life article says Atelier Ryza 3's producer on crafting the end and shifting away from fan service. Reading the Go Nintendo article a little bit though, it says fan service in anime and to a lesser extent games has been a hot topic for years now. Fan service, for those who don't know, is described as material in a work of fiction or in a fictional series that is intentionally added to please the audience, often sexual in nature, but not always. The idea of fan service in of itself isn't inherently wrong, but it can certainly take a game that might be appropriate for any audience and push it into an age-gated range. Of course, a lot of Japanese content that we consume typically has fan service added. I have absolutely no problem with that. Many other people do not as well, but now with this new Nintendo Life interview, they spoke to the producer to see if fans were imagining the series more tame approach, but he confirmed a conscious decision. Now, of course, this translation and the potential mistranslation of it has been causing a lot of debate. So reading what was said first, the uh, interview says, having reviewed all of the Switch entries in the series over the past few years, we have noticed a shift in what you might call a more fan service style towards RPGs that feel like they are trying to appeal to a much wider audience. Has it been a conscious decision to redirect the style of the franchise in this way? And he answered, yes it is. We want as many players as possible to pick up and play our games for this reason, we are constantly listening to the opinions of various players and looking for and coming up with content that they will enjoy again. We would be happy if many people think of Gust games when they think of JRPGs. Now, first of all, if things were changed, we don't know what would be going into the new release, but this is raising a lot of questions. I obviously really hope that this isn't true because this is a franchise I have supported and enjoyed for years now, and fan service is a part of this series and these characters. Let's not pretend that that's the only thing going for them, too. They have such complex alchemy systems and beautiful artwork, storytelling, and if they tone down the fan Fan service, it would be a massive mistake for them. I think that we can all accept that. But another major aspect to this is that all of this could be mistranslated or misrepresented. The original interview was done with Nintendo Life, and the title of their article does highlight shifting away from fan service, and obviously they know that is going to bring people in. It honestly does seem like a loaded question because the premise of the question is a lie. They say the past games have shifted away from fan service, but that is not not true. Honestly, I feel like this question could have thrown this producer off, and while he does respond to, has it been a conscious decision to redirect the style of the franchise with yes it is, the question is very long, drawn out, and the yes it is could have been a response to something that was asked before, uh, like 
a response to them wanting their games to simply appeal to a wider audience. Even giving him that benefit of the doubt, though, that is still worrying because typically that statement in of itself would be code for toning down small things in a game so it would get something like a lower age rating. And of course, another element to this could be, yes, they are toning down the fan service and the content in this title is unfortunately going to be different than the others. Obviously, we will know in the next few days since the game does launch tomorrow when I'm releasing this video and over the weekend people will play it and will know. I just don't think I believe that here because they do know that fan service is a massive part of the appeal to their titles and they have, you know, put fan service in every single one of these games. At the very least, though, if it turns out fan service is in the game, which I do believe that it will be, this is part of the concerted effort by activist journalists to push against things like fan service. As you can see, this was written by two individuals. The first one was P.J. O'Reilly. There wasn't a lot of information about them, but also Alana Hughes. And I don't know a lot about these individuals, so I don't want to make big assumptions here, but after doing a bit of digging, I did find an article by Alana that talks about sexuality in the Replicant, where she even calls it queer replicant, which I'm sure didn't sit well with a lot of people at the time, and it dives deep into her personal sexuality and even comparing herself to what the Replicant characters go through. Also, her Twitter account has been deleted, but if you Google her name and put Twitter afterwards, it shows that she previously had the LGBTQ flag in her handle, and she also has she, her pronouns listed on the previous site she worked for, RPG Fan. So there is that. And PJ O'Reilly, the other journalist, I could basically find no article hit pieces about, but clearly they put together this article and the uh, loaded questions. And at the bottom of this article, it even says that it has been lightly edited for clarity, yet they don't point out what is edited. This whole article is a mess, so I understand why people are afraid of censorship and this game potentially being toned down, but there are a ton of red flags here that I just can't look past again. I don't think that this producer would go into an interview and straight up admit they threw away the fan service. I want to give this producer the benefit of the doubt. Out, but things are still very questionable here. Maybe it is as simple as what he said and the yes it is does refer to the censorship and the fan service being toned down. Obviously, we will know in a few days once people have picked up their copy and rushed through it over the weekend, and I am still hopeful because I have really loved this series in the past, but right now, there are a lot of red flags. I am personally, though, leaning towards these journalists just hate fan service, wanted to trash on this game, and so they came up with this headline about it shifting away from fan service so they'd get hate clicks. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this and found it important and informative, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.